And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at City Skylines, the board game. City Skylines is touted by many folks as a successor to the SimCity style of games. I've not actually played City Skylines itself. I've watched some videos about it and things, and but I'm a huge SimCity fan, and I'm a huge fan of building cities, especially in board games. The designer of this one is the same designer as that of Nations, and Nations the Dice Game, and several other games that I enjoy. So, looking forward to giving this one a whirl. It is a one to four player cooperative style game. You can lose it, but you don't necessarily win the game you're just trying to get a score and build a productive successful city here's how it plays You'll play a scenario that's made up of several boards and you're going to be starting milestones by paying money to essentially open up different boards over the course of the game. And as you open these up, there's going to be these roads on them and that's going to break the city into different districts. And some buildings are going to affect everything that's in that district. There's going to be different decks of cards that players are going to be drawing from. One, two, and three. And these are going to be giving you different cards and buildings that you can build in a district. When you build a building, it's going to have different effects. It will also show the shape of the building. So, for example, this elementary school is going to you know, cost a money to build, but it's going to increase happiness. Um, this residential zone, uh, which doesn't have a particular shape because it can be any of these shapes here. Here, the residential zone zapes, shapes will add one to employment, add one to fuel, and if it's combined here, if, if you have a police thing, you will also get happiness. Each player is going to have a hand of these cards, so you'll have some cards, and as you draw cards, you can draw them from e any of the different decks that you want to, uh, although the, the cards from deck three might be harder to get on the, on the board here, like this residential zone, you know, there's a lot more going on in this zone, you know, because it will cost all this stuff, it's going to increase employment and traffic, it will take down the trash by one, but then if it's with all these other buildings, you're going to get more employment, so that's fantastic. Fantastic, uh, but the problem is you would need those other buildings in play. So on a player's turn, they can play a construction card. They'll play the card in front of them. If it has a matching building, you can put the building on the board. Uh, if it's, again, residential, commercial, or industrial, you can pick any of the different shapes. And you can basically put the buildings anywhere you want as long as it fits into the space. So as time goes by, you know, you might... I might want to put a building there, but there's no way to put that building in that space. So you're playing kind of a game of Tetris as you put these buildings out. And you can put them in any of the zones that have been opened. If the building is a specific building, you'll have to find the one that matches that building, and you'll put it there. Some buildings will affect only buildings they touched. Other buildings will affect every building in that district. Another action players can take, you'll have money in the city's treasury, and you can spend two coins, um, two money tokens, to exchange one of the cards you have with another card. So you can take another card and put it into your hand if you can't play any of the cards. Sometimes you're not able to play the card because it will cause you or because it costs money and you don't have that money to spend. I want to put this medical clinic but I don't have money to put the medical clinic, then I can't play that card. A player can choose to end a milestone. You can do this if there's a tile, at least one tile, in every district. When that happens, you're going to look at your administrative board. And this is where different things are going to happen. So, for the power, water, and garbage, if they're in the red at all, so let's say this is the way they are. Water and power aren't doing so hot. They're down one step here, two steps here. Then your happiness will go down three steps. Then all your happiness, and hopefully you've got some happiness this round, you're going to zero that back out, and you're going to transfer it to a total overall happiness uh, card that you have. Then you're going to look at your employment. Employment's unusual because you want it to be exactly at zero. For each one away from zero that it is, you have to pay one money from your treasury. Players can also decide at this point if they would like to pay the money to flip over a new board. 
and start building onto that board and putting things in that one. You're going to keep going here. Uh, players can turn in construction cards at this point and you keep going, but you have to have at least two tiles in every district to basically end the last milestone and end the game. And then you're going to reduce your milestones one last time, and then you're going to see how much you have. Now, you might have a failed city at some point over the course of the game because you run out of money, but likely here you're just going to look at how many happiness you have total, and it will tell you how good your city is. Anything from a dying city to a heavenly city. Overall, I have to say I'm not thrilled with the components for this game. This happiness scale here, the permanent one, which is like a track here. Wow, what a pain this is to move it on. It looks neat and all that. Uh, this board is fine, but it only takes a little bit of a shake to move every dial on it. The, but the biggest problem are these pieces here. So it's a little, maybe a little bit hard to see here in the video. But you can see when I punched them out, they all have these, you know, spots on them where they were attached and honestly when you're putting these on the board those don't fit together very well it just the it doesn't fit that well and so they they feel kind of cheap in that regard even the artwork and stuff on the cards is Eh, it's okay. There's some unique buildings, which I'm like, ooh, that's a pretty neat, unique building. And then you look for the tile itself, and the tile and the building don't necessarily look exactly the same. By the way, there's different modules. There's unique buildings. There's policies. There's news. You can add these into the decks if you want to. Those are not things that you use in the base game. But overall, I thought that the, the components for the game were kind of lackluster because it needs to look amazing. And I felt like it. I was just mostly disappointed with the quality of the tiles. <sighs> Man, I just was not completely thrilled with how this game came together for me. So let's go through some of the things. First of all, the game says one to four players. They might as well just say one. It is a solitaire style game that, yes, you can play together and work together, but one person can just say, this is how everything should be done. It I played it solo and it was much better experience there because I'm not worrying about what other people I'm just trying to build a good city I mentioned the component quality but I, another thing I wasn't a huge fan of is there's so many shaped buildings and it's like okay well what building size fits in this area okay this one fits with this one in this way if I spend this building here then I can't build that size later first of all I found that to be a very unfun part of this game this whole Tetrising the city together. Um, from when I played SimCity, you put buildings where you could put them, but it was never like, oh, I can't find anything to go here. Usually to be like, here's a residential zone. I'll fit what I can in this area. Here it's like, well, I can't find any kind of building that fits in this area. Or these, this residential zone is a weird shaped one. I didn't like that part of this game at all. Especially in multiplayer, because you're sitting around talking for the longest time. And spatially, the buildings are all kind of weird sizes. So it's just like, where do they fit in the game? Not, I don't know. That didn't feel fun to me. And the problem I had with this game is that's kind of the whole game. This whole game felt like you were like, <gasps> I'm just trying to keep the city alive. It's a hard, hard game. And in fact, the first scenario is pretty difficult. I talked to the designer. And he said that the first scenario is harder than some of the other scenarios, which is true. I, I, I don't know. When I played SimCity, I didn't sit there and, and go, well, I'm here for a difficult, horrendous experience. No, I was like, man, I want to build a cool city and see what happens. And sure, maybe as time goes by, you're like, oh, I need to deal with these problems. But it was always like, look at this neat thing that I built. Not a, oh, man, I can't, I'm just losing this. I can't win because it's so difficult. No, I wanted to build a cool empire network. This is not how this game feels. This game's like, I'm trying to figure out the best buildings to build in the correct order. And I'll draw a three card. Oh, this one's no good. And you never have enough money to do anything, it seems, in this game. You always are, it seems like for every step forward, there's two steps back backwards. Happiness is a struggle. And that's not why I play a city building game. I play a city building game to see what cool things happen, not to, oh, I can barely keep myself around. That being said, I know that a lot of people will like to see that sort of thing happen. A lot of people will enjoy that city building type game. And so for those people, I think they'll like it. But for me, I found that this sort of thing is just, it's a solitaire puzzle 
that's made up of moving these tracks back and forth and putting things on. And while this game should have most definitely been one of the more thematic city building games, it feels one of the least thematic because of that reason. It felt like a big solitaire puzzle, which while some people like, I'm not even opposed to the solitaire part of it. I want it to be a fun puzzle, and instead, it's a fairly difficult one. So I think that there are some people who will like the game. I think that there are people who are going to really dive into this, but I think that at most I would recommend is with two players. Four is just too many, and there's too many like, I wouldn't do that. But they do it anyway, because they're like, well, it seems like the best decision at the time. There's also all these modules. Some make the game harder, thanks. Some make the game easier. There's special abilities per person. Those are kind of neat. I just want it to feel like there was this vibrant, thriving city, and instead it's kind of like, well, there's a police station here, and I like to build a police station over here, but I can't figure out how to do that. And that is not how city building games have always felt to me. It's like, what am I going to build and where? Not, well, I'm stuck between these two buildings. Which one will I build? So it has the theme of city skylines in the background. I just don't think it's strong enough to hold this game together. So that again, if you don't care about the city building part, you just want to play a really kind of hard puzzle about moving this, you know, dials back and forth to where you want them to be, this is for you. But that person isn't me. Dice Tower Judgment, just too puzzly and hard for me. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.